In this tutorial, we will learn how to assess and estimate internal consistency reliability, and we'll do so by estimating Chromebox Alpha as an indicator of internal consistency reliability. And so to begin, let's make sure that we're in the R Studio program, and then let's open a new R script file by going to File, New File, R Script, and then doing a quick Save As, and saving our R script file as by some name here, I'm saving it as test. Click save. And just a moment while it loads. And here we're gonna, yes, I want to overwrite it. And so here we are ready to begin setting our working directory and all those initial steps. I'm gonna go pretty quickly through those because um, those are covered in other tutorials. So as I mentioned, this is about internal consistency reliability. And so as the initial step, as usual, let's set our working directory. And so I'll use the setwd function from base R. It's my H drive, R workshop folder is where my working directory is. So I'm gonna run that. Alternatively, you could go to session, set working directory, and choose directory to do this manually. Now, I want to read in a data set that is called employee survey example. And so if I go down here to my H drive, and check out my H drive, which could be just a moment here, we will see that there's a folder called R workshop here. And while that loads, this folder is going to have a data file in it called employee survey example.csv. And so if we scroll down here, employee survey example, and I'm gonna click here and copy this name so we get it exactly right. Notice this employee survey example with a capital E, S, and E to begin each word, and there are no spaces. Okay, so now we're ready to read in the data. Now that we've set our working directory, know where it is. And we're going to use the read underscore CSV function from the reader package, which is part of the tidyverse. And so first we need to make sure that we've installed that package. And to do so, we would type it in like this into the install.packages function here. So within the quotation marks here, we would enter reader, which is the name of the function. I've already, or the package, I've already done this. I've already installed this recently, so I don't need to do this again, but you may need to do this. But what I do need to do is use the library function with reader as the sole argument, run that, and I need to access that package so that I can use that read underscore CSV function to read in the data. And so I'm gonna call these data S, uh, let's say serve, data here, and this is going to be the name of the data frame when I read these data in. And so I'll use the read underscore CSV function here. And again, the name of the file that we were talking about is employee survey example. And so just make sure you add the .csv extension to the end here and make sure it's all in quotation marks. And again, we're using the left hand arrow here to name this data frame as serve data here just arbitrarily. So let's go ahead and run that line there. Now we see that we have the serve data data frame here available for us. And imagine this is all survey data where each one of these um, represents, these variables represents an item here from the scale. So this could be job sat one. Perhaps the item was in general, I'm satisfied with my job, strongly disagree to strongly agree, where strongly disagree is one, strongly agree is five. And here you can see that we have the numeric values here already included. And then notice that we do have job sat two has underscore reverse. Let's assume this is a variable that needs to be, or an item from that job satisfaction scale that needs to be reverse coded, meaning it was framed perhaps on the opposite, maybe towards job dissatisfaction. In other words, strongly agreeing with it would imply dissatisfaction as opposed to satisfaction like the other two items. So we need to flip it. And that's one thing that we'll do is we'll actually recode this variable later on. Okay, so we'll start off today by just assessing internal consistency reliability between these three items here. So job sat one, two, and three. And in doing so, 
we are going to assess the homogeneity and the interrelatedness of these items here and to help decide whether or not they are consistent enough with one another to use them to create overall scale scores. Meaning, should we, for each person, which represents a row, take the average or the sum of their scores across these three items to represent overall job satisfaction. Okay, so we've read in the data there. Now it is time to, let's just go ahead and skip right to recoding, or in other words, reverse coding the job set uh, two, and I think it was labeled reverse here. Job set two, reverse. Notice the capitalization there as well. Okay, so there's different ways that we can do this. I'm gonna do it, which is probably the one of the more methodical ways that we can do this to make sure we get everything exactly right. And it gives me more peace of mind when I do it this way. And so what we'll do is first, we need to write the name of the data frame and then the dollar sign to say that we want to attach a variable. What we're going to do is create a new variable that I'm going to call job set to recode, which will just mean that it's been recoded. And so this will serve as a new variable that we can then remember, okay, this is the correct job satisfaction variable. And so I'll call this job set to recode. And then the next thing I'm going to do is enter brackets. And within the brackets, I'm going to enter the, the name of the survey or data frame again, which is serve data, the dollar sign, and the original name of the variable that we are going to reverse code, which was job sat to reverse. And now we're going to, in, within this brackets, give a conditional statement. So I'm going to say that when job sat to reverse is equal to one, which would mean strongly disagree, I want to then flip this so that one becomes five, because I want this to actually be interpretable on the same end of the continuum as the other two job satisfaction items. So I'll use this arrow here and then just note five. So what I'm saying is go through job set to underscore reverse item uh, and then look through all the scores and any one that is one equal to one, change that to a five, okay? And so now let's copy this. I'm gonna copy this four more times because we now need to do, when it's equal to two, we're gonna change that to a four. When it's equal to three, we'll keep it at three. We don't actually need to do this one, but I like to do it just for, um, so that it's more thorough, I suppose. And then when it's equal to, I'm sorry, four, we're gonna change it to two. And when it's equal to five, it's going to be equal to one. And this way, way we have reverse coded everything. And so we can actually go through and we can run this, run all of these together as a single chunk. And so let's go ahead and take a look and see if this was successful and that new variable was added to our data frame. Okay, so as we can see here, we do have the new job set to recode here. And let's actually sort by this so we can get some kind of idea whether or not this is going to be, um, this actually works. So we should see that, okay, the first few rows are one, one, two, two, two. So it should be the opposite end. It should be, when we look over at the original job set two reverse item, it should be five, five, four, four, four. Let's see if that's the case. Okay, yep, five, five, four, 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 four. Okay, so this worked. So now we've reverse coded that item. All right, so now we're ready to estimate Chrome box alpha, which is a common indicator of internal consistency reliability. So in order to do that, let's be sure to install the psych package. If you haven't already, I have, so I'm not gonna run this line right here, but it's a psych package, P-S-Y-C-H, all lowercase. Make sure you install that if you haven't, or if you need to update it, make sure that you reinstall that there. And then I'll use the library function and use psych as the argument to actually access that package. Now, the name of the function we're gonna use is alpha for Chromebox alpha here. And the script is gonna be perhaps a little bit more complicated than you're used to, but just bear with me here and we'll work through it. So the first thing that we're gonna do within the parentheses is enter the name of our data frame, where our data live. Now, after that, we're gonna enter a brackets, a set of brackets here. Now, this will seem a little odd, but be sure to put a comma 
and then C for the combined function here. And so why are we doing comma? Well, we're, try we're noting that we don't want to reference rows that would be over, if we put anything to the left here, it'd be rows. We're saying that the data are organized by columns. And so we are going to note then what columns we're going to use, in other words, variables to actually estimate Chrome box alpha. So what's going to be fed into it? Okay, so within the C function parentheses here, we need to enter the exact name of those job satisfaction items, which is jobsat1, but remember, and then we're going to use jobsat2 recode, which we just created, and then jobsat3. So first, and make sure you put these names in quotation marks, and then separate them. Each one of these will serve as an argument and separate them with commas. And then let's do job sat to and recode, which is the one we just created. And then job sat three. All right, so now we have the three variables here. Let's see if we specified, specified this correctly and let's see if the function will run. So let's click run. Excellent, that's always a good sign. And so now we can see the output we have. And we get quite a bit of output here, which is really excellent when it comes to this alpha function from the psych package. And so here you can see the raw alpha and the standardized alpha. Typically, these will be pretty close uh, for, the data, very, for the data we'll be working with. Now, here we see that the raw alpha is 0.78. Now, it's customary that any alpha value that is 0.7 or higher is considered acceptable. So we usually feel, OK, this indicates acceptable levels of internal consistency reliability. Once we get into the 0.8 range, it's good. Um, when we get into the low 0.9 range, it's very good. And we get up all the way up to 0.95 to 1, 1 being the highest alpha you could have. It's in the excellent range. Now, if you're between 0.6 and 0.7, that's kind of the questionable range. But anything below 0.6, it's very poor internal consistency reliability. Now, one thing I should note is that you can kind of game internal consistency reliability is the way that it's calculated by having more items. So there's been some research by Jose Cortina in 1993 where he looked at um, how, once you get above about 18, 19 items, I believe is what he found, you're pretty much going to be guaranteed to have high internal consistency reliability. And this is why if we're going to use this to assess internal consistency reliability, we should use it with shortish or shorter scales. OK, so this alpha is pretty acceptable by itself. But now let's go down to another table that's uh, to a table that's really helpful in the output, which is called reliability if an item is dropped. And so this can be a little bit daunting to read at first, but let me walk you through it. So notice we're really going to focus on this first column here, the raw alpha. And then notice we have the names of the three variables listed here. And the way you interpret it is as follows. If we drop this item here, job sat one, but retain all the other items in the scale, our alpha will actually fall from 0.78 to 0.62. Now, if we come down here, if we drop that second item, but retain all the other items, it's going to drop to 0.63. So removing either one of these items will actually make our internal consistency worse, and it'll put it into that unacceptable range. But check out this here with job sat three. Note that it is actually at 0.82, which is 0 0.04 larger than 0.78. This is a little bit of a conundrum here. So what this means is that actually, if we drop this third item and retain these first two items, our internal consistency is going to get better. So there's something that's not that the third item isn't hanging as well as we would say with these first two items. That said, it's still all three items still result in an acceptable Chrome box alpha. It's just it would be good if, in terms of a qualitative descriptor, if we dropped this third item. So what to do here? Well, this is the first bit of information. You can use this table as a tool. The next thing you would want to do is actually go to the item content. If the job sat three item looks very much like it's tapping into that concept or construct that uh, conceptual definition of what you would consider to be job satisfaction, then by all means, keep this item. It might mean that it's just tapping into some slightly different aspect of the job satisfaction domain. And that's fine. And that can actually be a good thing. Now, if it if you start looking at this third item and you're like, ah, this I don't think that's measuring job satisfaction. I think that's measuring organizational commitment. Well, then that coupled with the fact that alpha would increase 
If you drop that item, I would probably suggest dropping that item. Okay, so that's how you work through the alpha output there. So that's essentially what you do with Chromebox Alpha. You don't always have to reverse code unless you need to. So I showed a little tutorial on how you would actually go about reverse coding um, an item. And, and you would definitely get an error if you did run this with the original. Let's do that actually. So if we just ran it with the original non-reverse coded item here and run that same script here, yeah, we'll get an error message down here that even suggests that some items were negatively correlated with the total scale and probably should be reversed. So it's telling you, you should reverse code those. And look how wonky our Chromebox alphas are. They're actually negative, uh, which is, uh, is not good and not really a, um, a feasible value if you're really assessing internal consistency reliability. So anyhow, this wraps up the tutorial on assessing internal consistency reliability in R using that alpha function as an indicator of Chromebox alpha from that psych package.